What's going on, everybody? I am back for the breakdown of the Wednesday, November 29th slate. Um, this might have to be a little bit abbreviated. Uh, you can see 727. I'm a little behind schedule compared to uh, where I normally am in the mornings. Just had some Excel issues, corrupted file, couldn't get it to, to open um, some sort of calculated field error. Not that anybody really cares, but I had to roll back and do a little bit of work for a second time this morning. So I don't have a ton of uh, additional time. This might be a little bit shorter than it normally is. And honestly, I don't blame you guys for not wanting to listen to me as long because um, last night sucked, as you can see in the recap video that you should uh, go check out. But let's dive in here. We've got 10 games couple interesting games, a little bit of injury news to to deal with. Um, a couple of these games don't have uh, official spreads. I've loaded them in <clears throat> as much as I could, um, but let's just do this. So first game on the slate is uh, Pistons Suns. Uh, Pistons have the third highest implied total of the night, 114.75. They've got the Suns on a back-to-back. Uh, Booker and Warren both played really well last night, so it'll be interesting to see if they can keep that up over a back-to-back. -back. We've got Drummond coming off of the giant game against Boston. I'd like to see how he responds. So, off the bat, um, I do sort of like Drummond, but I want to take a, look, a deeper look at the Suns. So let's get there now. We need the Pistons. And while I'll touch on this when we get to the Suns, um, they seem to be rotating the, like, who sits in the Monroe, Len, Chandler group. Monroe didn't play at all last night. I expect him to play tonight. Um, right now I have Chandler as the one that is out. He's played a bunch of games in a row. Just seems like on the back to back, he's the guy that's going to sit. But really, none of those three guys are in play unless we have like very specific news before a lock. Can't get comfortable today. I don't know. Um, look at me. I'm saying I need to go quickly. I still haven't done Detroit. And we'll still be doing a live before lock tonight. So. No worries there, it's not going anywhere. So we need Phoenix. All right, so they're gonna give it up at the rim, um, which is a great spot for Drummond. They're gonna shoot, obviously, so from a rebound perspective, I like that idea. Um, I like Andre Drummond tonight. It might feel a little uh, chasey coming off of the the big Celtics game, but I just think he's in a really good spot. He's been playing really well, and I just think he's in a really good spot. Suns are yeah, <laughs> Andrew Drummond. Now from that point, we need to take a look at. Some of the other guys on the on the Pistons, and really, when we're talking about other guys, we're not really going any any lower than Reggie Jackson. Um, Suns do tend to limit threes, which doesn't really fit Stanley Johnson of all people. Um, Man, with the Pistons implied total, Suns on the back-to-back, -back, I like a lot of Pistons. I think that Avery Bradley is in a good spot. And I think Tobias Harris is in a good spot. Yeah. It's a good game. 
I think Ish is in a, in an interesting spot for GPPs. He just doesn't get enough minutes to play in cash. Now for the Suns. They have the uh, 13th highest implied total, so that's middle of the pack for tonight. Uh, 10275. Heading to Detroit on this back to back, and like I said, I, you can't you can't really touch Chris Bender, Len Monroe, or Chandler without any very specific news. So what we're really looking at is Tyler Ulis, Devin Booker, and T.J. Warren. Love the Suns as a like in the grand scheme of things, but let's see here. The back to back does make me nervous. But if we're looking at Warren Booker and Ulysses. And I don't love Alright, so here's like the tricky thing. If you like TJ Warren tonight, it's hard to like Drummond. Um, you know, Warren's going to get to the deck, and that you know that could be bad for Drummond. I think Ulysses looks uh, like an interesting point guard punt. Needs twenty one and a half to hit five x. He's only at forty three hundred salary on Fanduel, so I think that he's worth a look. And then I think that uh, Devin Booker as well needs a second look. Um, yeah, uh, that's probably all I would do from this game. It's a decent game for fantasy. Uh, I don't think I don't expect it to be like crazy chalky, but you know there are some guys there that are going to be solidly owned throughout the slate. Let's jump to Magic Thunder. Um, I don't expect too, too much here. If we head to Orlando to start, Orlando 103.25. Uh, that's 12th on the slate. They are six-point dogs at home to the Thunder. Um, nothing immediately stands out for me for the Magic, nor should it. Aaron Gordon needs 38 and a half, which he has done three out of his last four, not with any great amount. And then Vooch needs 41, which he's done twice in his last five. He's been high 30s in his last five as well. It's not really the best matchup for him that, like off the top of my head. Um, I don't think that I'm going to end up with any guys from the Magic unless I paste this in here and it's a sea of green, but I don't expect that. So we might be just done as soon as I click paste. Or as soon as I click refresh in this case. Okay, so... I have to assume that they would be playing Paul George on Aaron Gordon, and that that strikes me as a matchup that's not great for for Gordon. Um, I don't see anything on here that makes me go crazy in a positive way for anything for Orlando, including their total. Um, I might do a deeper dive on them later, but for right now, nothing. Nothing there is uh, particularly sexy. Now, Thunder. Um, it, there's four guys that we would potentially want to look at. I can't ever roster like Roberson or any of those clowns, so 
you know, it's the big three in atoms. Just looking at it, I think that Russ and Mello are going to look pretty tasty, but, you know, it all depends. Hmm, okay. So... No glaring negatives for me. Let's take a deeper look at the recent performances of the big three guys. So Russ needs 55 on FanDuel, which he has done easily in three of the last four and essentially hit on the fourth. Um, I'm not really worried about any Orlando defensive point guard, so Russ looks great for sure. Um, Paul George needs 43, which he's done twice in the last five. Upwards, you know, upper 30s in the last two so it doesn't I don't love Paul George but I understand if you want to take him I don't he's probably not the one I'm looking for and Mello needs 31 which he's done one, two, three, four. four out of his last six Almost five of six. The only egg he laid was the most recent game that the Thunder played. They're on a heavy amount of rest. Um, so I do like Mello tonight. And then Steven Adams. He needs 28. Um, he can get there. He's you know He's got three games in the 30s in his last five. It strikes me more as a Steven Adams defense game than anything else. Not necessarily a, a game where Steven Adams goes big, but I don't dislike him. Now on to Philly. They have the fifth highest implied total based on what my guess is. Uh, favorites against the Wizards at home. Wizards on a back-to-back. -back. Coming off a slog of a game against the Timberwolves where Bradley Beal um, has earned my wrath. Doesn't mean I don't like him for tonight, though. Anyway, um, Ben Simmons right now is questionable. I am assuming that he is in, but if he is not, we're going to want to take a deeper look at TJ McConnell. And you probably want to take a look at TJ McConnell regardless on DraftKings, where he's only 4,600. I would assume that I'm going to like some Sixers here. Let's find out. I don't want to fade the Wiz tonight and then have them come out and do everything I thought they were going to do last night. Alrighty. Um, you know, not the best matchup offensively. But we've got a lot of options here for Philly. I think Embiid looks okay. I know there's a lot of red there, but basically only corner threes is a uh, is as relevant in that. Um, so I don't mind Embiid. And I don't mind Simmons if he's healthy. I don't I'm not really interested in anybody else on here. Although, made up fifth highest implied total, maybe I should be. And then, obviously, TJ McConnell, if you have that option. Sarich on DK looks okay. 
five thousand is not a bad price. I don't see anything else. Now to the wizards, the bane of my existence for today. On this lovely hump day. So Fraser got almost no minutes yesterday. Uh, this table's not refreshed. Frazier played 16 minutes. <clears throat> I don't have him going big tonight. Uh, I dropped him down to 25. Sodoransky <coughs> picking up 17 minutes. Um, so you still have to look at Beal, Porter, Keefe, Oubre, Gortat. Uh, but the interesting thing about this back-to-back -back is that outside of, like, you know, Frazier can get some run. Gortat only played 20 minutes last night. He can't be can't be too tired. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to be right back on the Bradley Beal train tonight. I have no issues with it. Now, based on my line, this puts the Wizards at 105.25, which is 11th, so middle of the pack tonight. I think, <clears throat> sorry guys, I think Beal looks really good. I think that Otto Porter looks pretty good. Um, this is probably the night that Gortat goes off. Uh, but I worry about him against Embiid. It's something I'll look into a little bit more. No thanks on Tim Frazier, even though he'll probably go off. That's it for me there. Moved it. Knicks and Heat, which I don't think that I'm going to spend too much time on. Probably won't even look into the matchup right now just because I'm a little strapped for time. I don't know why I'm up talking like this. Um, let's just take a look at the zinger. He needs 44 and a half to hit value. Done it. He's been on value twice lately. Um, the heater on the back to back, but that's not the best matchup. Just want to see if his shooting profile fits. If it doesn't, we can move on. That's not a team. There we go. I haven't had a lot of Porzingis this year, which is a shame because I like him a lot. All right, I at least have to look at Miami here. Um... Nobody takes a ton of threes for their position. Which is good, all things considered. Porzingis lives in the mid-range, so I think that I am I think this might be a decent spot for him actually. Just talking out of both sides of my mouth here. And Man, if Cantor wasn't coming off an injury, he'd be in a really nice situation. But that seems a little scary for me. So if you like it, uh, he might be a decent GPP play tonight. Let's head to Miami. We all know what Miami is going to look like. It's fire up Wayne Ellington tonight, right? Wayne did not make a shot last night. The three-pointers came back down to earth. And the funniest part of all of this is I'm going to recommend him again. 
because the Knicks give up threes like gangbusters. Now, this is a terrible game. You don't want... I will not be focusing on ending up with any of these guys just because of the, the implied totals. But, oh boy. I mean, this game is tailor-made for Wayne Ellington. This game is also tailor-made for Josh Richardson and Tyler Johnson and James Johnson. Um, I'm going to grab all of those guys because I think that the Heat might be in a decent spot for me filling in like my last spot. All aboard the Wheezy train again. Let's go, Wayne. Knock those threes down, brother. Raptors and Hornets. Um, this one will only be interesting on the Hornets side, I believe. Everyone knows. It's, you're pretty much only going to be on Lowry or DeRozan. Um, nobody else is in a good... like uh, DK... Pascal Siakam is um, somebody you should definitely be looking at because uh, he's getting more minutes than Ibaka right now. I bet they're regretting that Ibaka contract. I just want to see which one of Lowry and DeRozan is actually the good spot. Ugh, I always hate when I get it wrong. Um, they kind of both are. Given the two, all right. Lowry needs forty-one. DeRozan needs <clears throat> thirty-five. But DeRozan's price is down. Uh, DeRozan thirty-five with no issues. Oh, for three of his last six, but they just happen to be the three oldest. And then Lowry needed 45, I believe. 41. Uh, which he's done in four of his last six. Almost five. So I think it would be... I think looking at Kyle Lowry is a definite definite. Especially, and it's not like Kemba Walker is any great shakes, but Michael Carter Williams is not a very good basketball player. He will be starting uh, for the Hornets, most likely. I believe Kemba is doubtful. I do not have him in as of right now. I don't know why Michael Carter Williams has a $5,200 salary. That's annoying. Um, I can't imagine having any part of this game. I, I thought that Michael Carter Williams was about to be a punt, but that was not a salary I was expecting. So I think Kyle Lowry is just going to be really, really tasty. He should be able to feast. Um, yeah, Michael Carter Williams, like, he needs 26, and he's, he should get the minutes to be able to do something good. But, I mean, that's a risky play. It's, it's probably GPP only. I could see giving Dwight Howard a look. Um, I, can't, I can't see him being terribly concerned with Valanchunas, uh, Pirtle, or Bebe, so... I think Dwight is probably the only guy I would look at here. And I would be shocked if I got there just because of the implied total. You know, eight-point dogs in Toronto. And I think that might be a made-up line for me. And, uh, you know, they're missing their best player. Got to get it moving. Uh, Rockets in Indiana. This will probably be one of the chalkier games. Um... I think that it this conversation <coughs> starts and ends with Paul and Harden. Um, that's not what I wanted to look up. 
I think Chris Paul is almost assuredly going to be in my lineup tonight. Barring any sort of weird news. <clears throat> Shout out to that guy that mentioned that I'm um, the guy that coughs a lot on YouTube. Couldn't be more correct. Um, yeah, whoo, God, the Rockets look good tonight. I think James Harden is in play. Expensive, 12-2. Uh, I like Chris Paul tonight, and then that's probably it. But I'd be okay ending up with like an Ariza or Gordon or something. Yeah. Now Indiana. And like again, uh, this will, this is just like two nights ago. Capella looks fine. He just scares me from a minutes perspective. I never know what he's gonna get. Nene's back, so I assume that people are gonna somehow still love Black. But I'm guessing he's not really gonna play. And then we got the Pacers coming in off of Oladipo's monster game. Cannot get this stupid formatting to stay. So I'm willing to go all the way down to Lance, but I don't see it tonight. Um, Boyan doesn't look horrible. I mean, I can see it being a good game for Oladipo if the shots fall. But I'm not going to be on anything from Indiana for right now. That could change. <clears throat> All right, Pels and Timberwolves. Pelicans have the fourth highest implied total. T-Wolves on the back-to-back -back coming off the loss to the Wizards last night. And we need to obviously take a look at who we're going to take, whether it's AD or Boogie. And this probably going to have a lot of chalk in it. Pretty high implied total, both teams in the top 10 for the night. So Boogie and AD basically both need 50. So how have they been playing? AD's done it three of his last six. Boogie's done it once in his last six. Man, he shoots a lot of threes now. That's crazy. Um, game doesn't really fit AD or Boogie. But one of them, so that'll be, one of them will get Taj, and one of them will get Towns. You would have to assume that Towns would guard AD, and Taj would guard Boogie. Um... I don't really like either of them. I don't think that's going to be a place where I pay up. But they have the fourth highest implied total, so I'm, I'm missing something. I 
Maybe what I'm missing is Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday needs 34 to hit value. Did it in his last time out. Did it in the game before that. He's done it three of his last six. You know, we're still Teague is still questionable. We don't know what's going to happen there. Um... I'm going to have to do a little bit more digging, but right now I, I don't think that Boogie or AD are going to be the guys that I pay up for. On to Minnesota, which we know how this generally looks. Not the best game yesterday for them on the loss. I had Wiggins, didn't go well just annoying obviously if we get early news you know Tyus Jones could be in play what's his salary at now 5300 so it's, he's not even like a no-brainer um, but if we're gonna talk about taking guys from Minnesota I think it's Taj again. Just because of, you know, he just he's an iron man. And then I'm willing to look at Towns. I don't think that's where I'll be, though. Mavs in Brooklyn. I might not even look into this game. Yeah, I don't. Um, maybe Wesley Matthews. He's at 5,000 on FanDuel or Barnes. Barnes needs 32. No, I'm good. Um, Dennis Smith. Needs twenty nine. Yeah, I don't. I don't want any part of Dallas. Crap implied total. I assume I don't want anything from Brooklyn either. As of right now, um, Rondé Hollis Jefferson and who the hell else is hurt for Brooklyn? Alan Crab are both out. We don't. We haven't heard anything on Damari Carroll, so my assumption is that he's in. They have the second worst implied total, 98 points. That game is just ugly. Um, but they're sort of need, they sort of need to be looked at just because of the minutes that are missing. So if anybody fits a profile here against Dallas, you know we'll want to take a look. You know, if Isaiah Whitehead ends up getting like 25 minutes again, then it's interesting. I don't have him with that many. But Dallas is going to give up threes. And that sort of fits because the Nets are going to bomb those shits. So I think that well, Spencer Dinwiddie needs 30 to hit value. How often has he been doing that? 29 in his last one. He's done it three of his last six so I think that Spencer Dinwiddie needs to be looked at but 7,000 is expensive and then if you're confident Joe Harris gets the minutes I think that he looks like a decent spot as well and I'm just nervous about Damari Carroll Spurs Grizzlies is another game where I don't anticipate having any part of it. I'll take a look at Aldridge right now since I generally just ignore him and he goes off. Um, he needs 43 and a half to hit value. He obviously did in his last time out with a big 64 and a half point game. 
He hasn't done it in any other game besides that. We're playing the Grizzlies, coming off of firing their coach. So, you know, I'm sure they're ready to rally around J.B. Bickerstaff or what other retread is the coach. I think it's Bickerstaff. Nobody cares. So I'm only looking at Aldridge here, and from there it doesn't matter. Um, Memphis. Yeah, I'm good on Aldridge. I don't really want any other part of this. It's a terrible game. It's a slog of a game. Memphis, 93.75 implied total. It's 20th on the night. Um, much like I just said, there's only one guy here that's potentially rosterable in my opinion, and that is Marc Gasol. Although, if Chalmers is out, that changes everything. Right now he's questionable. If Chalmers is out, you probably don't want Andrew Harrison, but you probably want some, you probably want like Tyreek Evans or something like that. Um, what do the Spurs do on defense? Yeah, I, I'll be avoiding that game. Last one we need to look at, <coughs> Lakers and Warriors. Lakers hosting the Warriors. Uh, 107.75 implied total right now. That is seventh on the night. It's going to be some chalk here. Um, news is going to be important for the Warriors. I assume that everybody's playing. We shall see. Um, you would expect the Warriors coming off that uh, dreadful Kings game that they are going to put the smack down on the Lakers. So I'm a little nervous about the game, even though it's only in, what eight point line or something along those lines. It's just not a, not a spot I like for the Lakers. I can see them just getting shellacked. Nothing exactly jumps off the page for the Lakers from a matchup standpoint, but we'll take a look at Ingram, Ball, Nance. Mm, probably not Nance. I want to see how those minutes hash out first, but Ingram needs 30. He's done it in four of his last six, so I'd be crazy to say that I don't I can't I'm not gonna look at him and ball needs 33 which he's done in f three of his last six almost four um, not the best game for him though so I'll probably just look at <coughs> Ingram and then if we look at Golden State against the Lakers Curry might do bad things. The ball, Ooh, he might just be like, not your time yet, Sonny. Tell your dad to shut his mouth. Not the biggest uh, LeVar Ball fan, but that shouldn't be terribly shocking. And I would imagine most people aren't the biggest LeVar Ball fan. Kudos to him for grinding, though. Okay. What do we want from the Warriors? I think Steph looks good. And... I think Iguodala could be an interesting GPP guy. <coughs> I drink this, uh, I've got MCT oil in my coffee. It just coats the throat. Yeah, Curry for sure. He needs 49. He's done it in three out of his last seven. It's probably just Curry for me right now. Second highest total. Um, I'll probably take a deeper look at Draymond. He's 39. Hasn't been there, so maybe I won't take that look at Draymond. And I don't really trust Durant coming back. So that's the short list right there, guys. 
Uh, you can pause the video if you need to take a deeper look at that. Okay. Get a little bit bigger. Um, that's it. You know, 10 game slate. It's a pretty narrow list for right now. I'd like to see how that fills in. Let's dump my projections into Cruncher and see, just see what the optimal looks like before I sign off. See how far off I am. I'm sure Westbrook will be in it. He always is. <clears throat> what do we got? There it is. Westbrook, Rondo, Bradley, Sean Kilpatrick, George, Mello, Ingram, Nance, Towns. Yeah. Um, I could roll with some of that. That looks a little bit better. But anyway, that's it for me. I tried to get through it as quick as I could. It took me longer than I wanted it to. But what are you going to do? Um... Again, I will be back tonight, live before lock, 6 o'clock. Set your phones and calendars. Um, we're going to grind out a victory tonight. I'm feeling pretty good. Going to make up for yesterday's awfulness. Go check out the recap video for yesterday where I complained about the Wizards and I am back sleeping in a in the dirty, dirty alley. Um, if you like this video, please like this video. Uh, that really helps me show up in search results. If you can, subscribe. Um, also very important for me to grow that subscriber base. Follow me on Twitter. Um, if you see at the top, see my Twitter handle. It shouldn't be shocking. That's basically my handle for everything. It's also my name, so I use it quite liberally. Um, but yeah, just if you have any questions, hit me up. Projections will be out on the Reddit DFS, so if you have any questions, hit me up there. Have a good Wednesday, guys.